Yum, yum. Hey, everybody. Adam here. Let's talk about rendering in the Modo because I do that from time to time. We're gonna we're gonna actually talk about something called progressive rendering. That sounds very sounds very cool, very uh, very futuristic. Uh, it's actually uh, pretty straightforward. We've had it for quite a while in Modo, but nobody knows about it. That's the thing, or very not, not enough people know about it. I think. Um, so in Moto, traditionally, if you want to render something, uh, you basically, you, you know, you click this little blue render ball and then you come over here and you look at all the settings and there are a lot of render settings. In fact, if we just look at the channels list for this render item, there are so many settings! <laughs> and what should they all be? Well, you know, the defaults are, are a credible starting point, but if you want really good results in Moto, you gotta know how to mess with those uh, with those settings. You gotta really know how to dig in and what all the different settings do and how they relate to one another. It's a whole big thing. And traditionally what you do is you set those up and then you go up to the render menu, you go down to render and or just hit the F9 key on your keyboard. You wait a little while because you got a slow computer like me. And then uh, next thing you know, it starts doing its thing. It's going to go through and run its irradiance cache passes. I know you've watched this a gajillion times in Moto, and the reason you're watching this video is because you don't want to watch this anymore, right? So what it'll do, of course, is it'll go through and do these uh, these IC passes if you're using IC, and then go through and use the buckets. And this is it's why we refer to this as bucket rendering. So it goes bit by bit, you know, rendering these. And once it's done, it's done, and that's that. You get what you get. And uh, if your quality settings aren't good enough, if you're seeing some problems with the render visually, that uh, some stuff that you don't like about it, well, tough. Tough luck, you got to start over. Okay, so um, I'm going to show you an alternative to that, something we can do in Moto that uh, that I think, oops, just yeah, you know, say yes there. There we go. So um, I want to show you something else that we could do instead. Basically, instead of hitting F9 and then just waiting and then hoping for the best, what we can do is something called progressive rendering. All that means is that we're going to render using the preview viewport. And it's just going to render and render and render and render and render and keep getting better and better and better into infinity until you're happy with the result. You don't have to uh, you don't have to trust that your settings are right because the settings become largely irrelevant. So there are a few settings that matter. We'll get to those in a second. First thing, let's set up a basic progressive rendering setup. Now there are a couple of ways we can do this using the preview viewport. Um, and uh, they're right, right here. There's this slider down here at the bottom. You can go up to options and set a bunch of stuff. I find that a little confusing. I think it's easier just to go up here to this little cog wheel, the top right. That's all you need. You just click that. You got these settings. I can drag those off so I can look at them. These are the settings for that preview viewport. I'm going to set that convergence value up to 100%. Once you've done that, that means you're in full progressive mode. It means that uh, that this preview is not going to stop rendering really at any point. To be honest, it's I actually left one going for a couple of days by accident, and it did keep on going and going and going. So it'll just keep going into infinity. Next, we want to tick this box for full resolution. Once that's ticked, it's going to start over on us. Uh, that's kind of important. And now I can no longer navigate in this window because it's locked. The reason for that is because now I can zoom in and out on the image and it will keep rendering. So I can zoom in to 100% here and now I'm seeing a pixel for pixel preview of what this uh, of what this image actually looks like. Very cool. So this is now set up to be a fully progressive render. Uh, the only thing I would also go do is go over here to visibility and make sure that uh, basically everything is ticked. So uh, you know if you if you need fur for example, you're gonna have to tick that. Um, otherwise, you're not going to see your fur in the preview. So you need to make sure that everything is enabled. Now, once you have that, um, <clears throat> it's going to be pretty good, and it is going to keep keep going and going, and you will get some of the anti-aliasing benefits of this. The anti-aliasing will keep getting better and better, so if you have depth of field, for example, that's going to keep getting better and better into infinity. One thing that will not keep getting better and better is irradiance caching. If you're using irradiance caching in your image, as we are on this one right now, that traditional sort of moto splotchy look that sometimes happens in heavily GI-based scenes, global illumination-based scenes, um, you're going to get that sort of underwater splotchy effect happening. And there's nothing you can do about that, and Progressive won't fix it. So what I recommend is if you really want true, you know, <laughs> progressive goodness in your in your renders, you can optionally come over here to your global illumination settings for the render, 
And let's disable irradiance caching. Now we're using Brute Force Monte Carlo, and this will continue to get better into infinity. It's just going to keep calculating that and keep doing more and more samples until it looks absolutely exquisite, which is hopefully what you want. Also, indirect bounces. Now, that's set to 1 by default. Now, this is a slightly off-topic conversation. Um, I'm, this is not really related to progressive rendering. It's just some, just a general best practice. If you're using a global illumination-based scene, um, then your indirect bounces need to be at least two. Because if you don't have any direct light sources, the uh, the actual polys that are emitting light in this case in this case um, we're actually all of our light is being emitted by a light box. It's a it's a um, it's just a rig that I set up, and all of these are um, it, these are these are what we call lumigons. They're just glowing polygons. When those emit light, that counts as one bounce. So if we want any light to bounce around at all, we need to set this to at minimum two to get a reasonably realistic result. Now this is you see the image got brighter, but that's kind of what we want. What I have found through experimentation is that an, uh, a value of about 5 is a pretty accurate result. That gives you a result that looks good uh, in a fairly quick amount of time. However, if you're working with something like Maxwell, for example, Maxwell render is famous for its super high-end renders. Really all Maxwell is is a progressive render renderer, not unlike this one, just with a super high default setting. So all we have to do, you know, to get a Maxwell style render is just set this indirect bounce number up to, I don't know, 16, for example. And that's that's going to get you, you know, it's the, the visual difference between five bounces and 16 bounces is really negligible. It's not very much. So you will take a performance hit and the visual difference is not very much. But it is something. And so if you like that kind of thing, you can do it. I'm going to set this down to five. And now I think I'm pretty much, pretty much ready to rock. This is pretty much it. So all I would do is just, I like to just maximize this viewport so that, uh, you know, it's kind of full screen there. Don't have to worry about it. And then um, I like to zoom it until it snaps to 100%. Look at the bottom right of my viewport. Down here it has a size value. And uh, if I zoom out, it tells me it's 58.7%. I'm going to zoom in. And when it gets close to 100, it's going to snap there. And now I'm looking pixel for pixel at the final quality, final resolution image. And I can just decide when I think it's done enough. So I'm just going to leave this, let it cook for a while. And when we come back, it should look pretty good. Ah, you know what? I can't even wait. I'm just going <laughs> to, I just can't even, I, I have to sit here and wait for this thing to finish rendering and do something else. And that involves multitasking. And I don't, <laughs> I'm so terrible at multitasking. I would rather just have this video done. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tell you the result will look awesome. And I will post the result on the final post. And, uh, and you can show me how it works for you. One last note on progressive rendering. I've had to make a bunch of changes to my preview render here in order to make this work. You may find that kind of tedious to have to do all the time. You know, you don't want progressive rendering on all the time. That's kind of a waste. In general, you know, while you're working, you want the preview to be a preview. So you would, set, you know, set your convergence setting down a little bit, maybe to 94%, and then make sure you're not uh, working at full resolution here. And, uh, and now we've got a nice, just, just normal preview doing its thing here, and it's fast and, and easy. What I like to do is set up a separate layout that already has the progressive settings all set for me. So whenever I think my image is ready to go, I just head over to my progressive render tab right here, pop that up, and here on the right-hand side, this preview viewport is already all set up for me with all the right settings, and it just starts and goes. And I've even included some buttons up here for saving the uh, that image or saving a layered version of that image. Yes, you can even render animations this way. All you do is you tell it how long you want it to render each frame, and then it goes through and does it. It's pretty awesome. So um, what uh, what I would recommend is to set up something like that. If you like what you see here, this is, shameless plug, actually included in uh, remorseless uh, use of advertising and commerce, uh, the RenderMonkey plugin for Moto, uh, which which really is mainly a uh, it's a render manager for batch rendering. Uh, if you got a lot of files you need to render and you want to set those up and run them overnight, that's what RenderMonkey is all about. But it does also include this uh, very progressive render tab that you see here, and uh, and you could use that as well. Not trying to force you to do You don't have to do it. It's not that hard to do yourself, but you know, if you wanted it, you could go ahead and do that. All right. So uh, that's it for progressive rendering. Talk to you soon. We'll see you.